Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Shalom Israel, Shalom, Most High in Christ bless, Most High in Christ bless. This is 15 minutes with the captains. I'm Captain Amaziah, Sergeant Jonah, and today I have with me Soldier Jonah, all right? So we're going to smash another lie right out of the Bible. We're going to smash the lie. We all fall short of the glory of God, so that means you could do any evil you want. You could be as wicked as hell. That's what we hear on the streets from Christians, okay? Christians always pull the scripture when we try to teach them about God's laws, right? So let's start in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23. This is Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. See that? We all have sinned, brother. We all come short of the glory of God. So Christians, when you hear somebody rebut you with that scripture, what are they really telling you? I could be, don't even try to keep God's laws. It's impossible. We all sin. We've all done it. Okay? Now, let's go to Psalms 147 and 19. We're going to start right there. The book of Psalms 147 and 19. We all have sinned. All who has sinned? Let's find out who got the law. This is Psalms chapter 147 and verse 19. He show up his word unto Jacob. The word, the understanding of the Bible, and the, the Bible itself to who? Unto Jacob. Unto Jacob. Go ahead. His statutes and judgments unto Israel. Unto Israel. The, the, the laws and the penalties for breaking the laws, which is judgments, unto the nation of Israel. Same, same group of people. Jacob, Israel, same group of people. He have not dealt so with any nation. Wow. So wait a minute. God never gave the Chinese man his laws, the Chinese race, the white race, the Arab race, the East Indian race, the Hamite races. They never got God's laws. Wait a minute. First John 3 and 4. So who is the all? Let's start there. Right? Because it says we all have sinned. Okay. So now we know who got the law. Come on. First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever commits sin, whosoever commits sin, we all have sin, right? Transgressive also the law. Does what? Transgressive also the law. So in order for you to commit sin, you must have been given God's laws to commit the sin. Okay, so now we know who the all is, because only Israel got the laws of God, right? Give me Daniel 9 and 11. Let's make it even plainer. So in order to commit sin, you must transgress the law. So you can't sin if you were never given any law. Hmm. Come on, Daniel 9 and 11. This is Daniel chapter 9 and verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. Ah, you see how it makes sense now, brothers and sisters? All Israel has transgressed. Not all nations. All Israel has transgressed. Go ahead. Even by departing, they that might not obey thy voice, therefore the curse is poured upon them. So because you got the law and you broke the law, now the curse is poured upon you in Deuteronomy 28. What is the curse? Slave ships. Lose your nationality. Lose your identity. Being in a strange land. Being colonized. Okay? Bywords and proverbs. Proverbs and bywords. Your last name changed. Your national name changed. Oppression. Those are the curses. Okay, go ahead. 
and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God. Because, because what? Because we have sinned against him. Who's the we? Go jump up to the first part again. Who's the we? Yay, all Israel. Stop. All Israel. Now go back. No, give me, give me Proverbs 24, 16. Because remember, we all fall short of the glory of God. We've all sinned, right? Proverbs 24 and 16. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. For a just man falls seven times. See that? You see what the Bible says? A just man falls seven times. So guess what, brothers and sisters? We're all susceptible to sin. Every last one of us, as long as we're in this flesh, we're susceptible to sin, brothers and sisters. Does that mean you stay down and make excuses and give up? No, not at all. That's not what Christ said. That's not what no prophet said. Read it again. For a just man fall of seven times. A just man is going to fall seven times. Seven is just a number of completion. Okay, go ahead. And riseth up again. And does what? Riseth up again. So, brothers and sisters, if you fall seven times, you better get your behind back up eight times. That's what you do. You get right back up and you, you repent and keep God's laws. Go ahead. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. See that? But the wicked are going to be like... We all fall short, so, you know, I'm just going to stay wicked as hell. I'm going to go back to doing my birthdays and Easter and Christmas with my wicked family and all of that. That's what the wicked is going to say, brothers and sisters. Give me Baruch 428. Baruch 428. The wicked going to say, man, to hell with God's laws, man. The wicked, you know what the wicked do? They're going to find an excuse through the scriptures to remain wicked as hell. And this is one of the scriptures right here. Uh, that Romans 3.23. We all fall short. So what's the point of even trying to keep God's laws? That's what the wicked are going to say. Come on. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 28. For at it was your mind. Read right. For as it was your mind to go astray from God. So it was your mind to go astray. It was your mind to go into your sin. So being returned, so, uh -oh. so being returned, how do you return? Repent. Not remain in your sin, but to repent of your sin. Seek him ten times more. Do what? Seek him ten times more. Wait a minute. The Bible doesn't say just, 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 just remain in your sin. It says seek him ten times more when you repent, when you return, brothers and sisters. Let's go. Read it again, matter of fact. Let that sink in. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, uh -huh. so being returned, so being returned, seek him ten times more. Let's go to Isaiah 64 and 6. Isaiah 64 and 6. Let's Isaiah. a little more about, about our people that all have sinned. Let's go. Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 6. But we are all as unclean things. What did the Bible say? But we are all as an unclean thing. The Bible says we are all, all who Israel are as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness. And all our righteousness, all our efforts to keep God's laws are as filthy rags. That's why we got to seek him ten times more when we return, brothers and sisters. Because it's all counted as filthy rags. Man is filthy. Our minds are filthy. Our flesh is filthy. We're in this flesh that, that is susceptible to sin, susceptible to its own pleasures and lusts, brothers and sisters. So what does the Bible say? And all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Uh-huh. And we all do fade as a leaf. We fade as our leaf, as a leaf. And our iniquities. And our iniquities. Like the wind have taken us away. And our iniquities take us away, brothers and sisters. Why? Psalms 151 and 5. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 5. What happened to us? Let's see what King David has to say about this. Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 5. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. In iniquity. So the, the, the prophet, the king, David, said what? Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. He said he was shaped in sin. Go ahead. And in sin did my mother conceive me. So what is, what is King David saying right here? He was born in sin. Just like every last one of us in this wicked, disgusting Edomite world we, we are born in. We're born in sin, brothers and sisters. 
We're born, uh, by the time we're one years old, we got a birthday cake with a candle on top of it. We don't even know what the hell, we, 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 we trying to touch the damn fire on the, on the candle. We don't know nothing about these things. We are taught these behaviors from our parents, from our school teachers, from our pastors, okay? We're taught about Christmas and Easter and birthdays. We're taught that when we're young, we're gonna go touch on little girls and little boys in, in class, in junior high school, and elementary school. We're taught these behaviors. We're taught these sins. So now we got to seek what? 10 times more. So let's see what Christ said. Matthew's 548. We're born in sin. Does that mean we remain in sin and make excuses? Well, we all fall short. Eh, no big deal. So how the hell are you going to get the kingdom then? Come on. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect. What, what, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what, what color is those words written in? Red. So this is Jesus the Christ speaking. What did Christ say? Be ye therefore perfect. Christ said, be ye therefore perfect. He didn't use no script, no prophets to make an excuse to say, ah, just remain wicked as hell. We all fall short, even me. No, Christ didn't say that. He said, be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. That's what Christ says. So now you got a dilemma here. Am I going to believe what Christ says? Or am I going to go with a scripture that I, I'm going to use to twist and remain in my lustful sin? What am I going to do here? I to, what is the wicked going to do? The wicked are going to run to Paul and misuse Paul's words. That's what the wicked are going to do. Because guess what? The Bible does not contradict itself. You understand? So you can't have it both ways. You can't say one scripture says, Christ says, uh, um, be perfect. Then Paul says, well, we all come short. So it's either you believe the Bible contradicts itself or you don't understand the Bible. You can't have it both ways, brothers and sisters. Read it again. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings 8.61. How does one become perfect? What do I have to do to be perfect? Let's find out. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 61. Let your heart therefore be perfect. Do what? Let your heart therefore be perfect. The, uh, the, the King Solomon said, let your heart be perfect. Your mind be perfect. With the Lord our God. With the Lord our God. To walk in his statutes. Uh -huh. And to keep his commandments. To do what? And to keep his commandments. And to do what? And to keep his commandments. That's how you become perfect, brothers and sisters. By keeping his commandments, by keeping God's laws. Read. As at this day. I just thought of something. Let's go to Philippians. Let's go back to the New Testament. Philippians 4.13. How could I forget that one? Because Christians love using this one. They will use Romans 3.23 to say nobody can keep God's laws. Then at the same time, they're going to quote this right here. Let's go. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. We've all heard this one right here in church. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Woo! Oh, wait, that feel good. I'm about to do a praise dance out here. Do the, the, the chicken foot or something like that, right? We've all heard that scripture. Your grandma used to say it. She got a, a plaque of it on her wall or something, some garbage like that, right? Read it again. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So the apostle Paul says, I can do all things through Christ. You can keep God's laws through Christ. Yes, you can. You right there. You can do it. How do I know? Christ said, be ye therefore perfect. Paul said, you can do all things. He can do all things. You can do all things. All right? So we got to strive for that thing. Now go back. Romans 3, 23 again. Romans 3. Because the Bible says, you can do all things through Christ. Hallelujah. Let's go. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned. All Israel has sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Uh-huh. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Does that mean since all has sinned that you remain in sin? Absolutely not. Hold that. Give me one more. Sirach 15 and 20. Give me Sirach 15 and 20. All has sinned and come short. Okay. This is Ecclesiasticus chapter 15 and verse 20. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly, neither have he given any man license to sin. So, brothers and sisters, 
I hate to break it to you, you do not have a license to commit sin and stay in your sin. That's not biblical, for you to stay in your sin and be wicked as hell. That's not in the Bible. Read it again. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly. He has commanded no man to do wickedly. Neither have he given any man license to sin. No man on this planet earth has a license to do that. No Israelite has a license to do that. Now, go back to Romans 3, 23. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jump up to verse 19. Let's verse, see who the, let's say, let's just stay in the chapter and see who the all is. Verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith. What things whatsoever the law says, it does what? It saith to them who are under the law. So we know when you jump up a couple verses, who's under the law? That's Israel. That's Israel. That's Israel. Now, keep, go keep going. That every mouth may be stopped. Uh -huh. And all the world may become guilty before God. Jump to the very last verse in the same chapter. Romans 3 verse 31 Now let's see After all Paul said about We all come short of the glory of God And, and all have sinned Let's see what else Paul says In this very same chapter Do we then make void the law through faith? So Paul is asking you a question right here It's the same chapter It's the same context of the whole chapter Do we then throw away God's laws Because we have now faith in Christ That's what Paul is saying God forbid. Paul said, no. No, you do not throw away God's laws because we believe in Christ. Yea, we establish the law. What, what, what did the apostle Paul say? Yea, we establish the law. The apostle Paul, brothers and sisters, did not give you a license to sin or an excuse to remain in your sin. He said what? Read that last part again. We establish the law. Paul, the apostle Paul said, we establish the law. All right, so brothers and sisters, I hope you learned something. That's 15 minutes with the captains. I'm Captain Amaziah. And Soldier Jonah. And we say shalom. shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.